Hello, welcome to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper. So we got this job in. This is a lifting device. Um, I don't know what it's for, but it's it's built to lift something. It's got three threaded holes with uh, three custom bolts that go in and, and grab onto whatever it is, and then they can lift it. Well, this hole is all screwed up, and it needs to be fixed. The only way talking over with the customer they don't want to go to a larger size and that's usually what we would do is just drill it out and retap it to a larger size so what we're going to do instead is we're going to bore it out uh, probably just drill and ream and then make an insert and then thread that insert um, to the original size it's inch and quarter seven and then uh, get this thing back in service as quickly as possible and we're going to do that on the lucas horizontal boring mill So the hard part with this job is going to be indicating it all in. There's a 120 degree offset for each one of these bolts that go into whatever this thing is lifting. And getting this perfect is going to be difficult. So I already took a tap and cleaned up the threads a little bit. I mean, what's there? There isn't much left, but there's enough that I got it actually to go in really well and really straight. So now I'm going to take this, the bolt, and I'll just thread that in, and it goes in nicely. Um, goes in really well, but I don't trust that for lifting, and then they don't either. It's, it's not good enough. And we'll go ahead and we'll indicate across the bolt face to get it true, straight this way. So we'll measure perpendicular, and then, uh, then we'll measure our, around our bolt itself to get the center of the hole and that should get us right where we need to be. Like I said, I got this threaded in good. Um, it's, it's not moving, so we should be okay that way. So the biggest problem we're gonna have with this thing is this is a cone, and that's used to guide it onto whatever it is, but we also don't want our insert to come through and protrude in there. For one, I don't have jaws deep enough yet for the lion lathe, I haven't made any to hold this thing um, because of the big chamfer on the backside, and so we won't be able to clean that up. So we're gonna stop short and then just finish, put our insert in and thread it in, you know, thread through that and we should be okay. So not too bad for the first, just throwing it up there. Um, we're gonna go ahead and in, indicate this, get it true, and then I'll put a larger straight edge up here and we'll indicate across that just to make sure we got it in line, and then we'll indicate the center of our hole.
All right, so we got it indicated in, and all I used was a um, parallel from the mill. Held it up against that bolt, nice and flat, and then ran the indicator back and forth on it, and that should get us absolutely true. This, as far as our perpendicular, um, I was within a couple thou, and I could spend tile day trying to get it perfect. This isn't something that's absolutely perfect, so there is a little bit of leeway here, and, and we're gonna take advantage of that. Um, but now we're gonna go ahead and indicate for the center of the hole, and then we'll get it set up and start drilling. So I got it all indicated in off the bolt. Um, we're centered on there right now. I'm gonna switch this out to a, um, probably an inch and a quarter drill to start with. Open this up to size, and then I'll go up to my, um, either gonna do inch and a half or inch and three quarter. I haven't decided yet, and we'll see when I get to that point. So let's get drilling. So the first step here was we drilled out and drilled the threads out and made sure it was true and it cleaned up real nice. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I got an inch and a half drill. I'm going to drill through and then I've got an inch and 11 sixteenths counter bore and we'll come in with that. We're just trying to get this bulge out of here too. Um, and I'm hoping I can get that out and we'll take that counter bore come in as just to the edge and then we'll take the inch and three quarter reamer and ream it out and then I'll make it a plug, a threaded insert plug to go in there. So here's a fun and interesting one. My pilot locked up in there and broke off. Um, you know, the drill must have wandered a little bit, but that's okay. This thing's pretty rigid, so I'm just going to go in without the pilot. We'll get this opened up and then we'll ream it out.
So we got it all counterboard out. I got the inch and three quarter shell reamer in there. I'm gonna come in uh, most of the way. I'm gonna come through on the top side here where the taper is and just clean that up some. And then we'll make our insert to go in there and I'll get that in and then take the flap wheel and just clean that excess off. And that should be good enough for this application. All right, so we got our inch and 7 64 hole drilled for our tap. This is an inch and a quarter seven uh, national course tap. And we're gonna use a Morse taper tap holder in the tailstock. And we'll just feed it in. Um, and that's the nice part about the clutched headstock is I can feed it in, stop it, and then feather it into reverse and bring it in nice and slow instead of it snapping right up to the 50 or 70 RPM that I'm actually gonna thread at. So. Let's get that going. All 
Okay, so we're set up. I tightened the chuck a little more just to make sure it don't slip. Now we're gonna run it. Actually, 63 RPM I feel is good. We're not gonna lock the tailstock. And we're just gonna feed it in and follow it in and be ready to stop. And looking good. And reverse. And just like that, made a nice thread. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna turn down the outside. Um, the distance I need and part it off. We're gonna turn it down, It's uh, the bore measured 1.752, so we're gonna turn this to 1.753, um, a light press fit, and then uh, I'll probably do a Dutch joint and also weld it in, but uh, let's get that going. All right, so we got it turned out, and what you saw there part way through when I was parting it, as I switched over to my, my um, round insert tool and just put a bit of a chamfer on there to accommodate the uh, chamfer inside the hole from the reamer. And it's, it's tight. Um, so what we're gonna do is we'll get it started here, and it just starts. It just 
just can barely get it started and it's going to be a tight fit. Thread my bolt in there and I'll just tap it in the rest of the way. I put this step on here so I can weld it once it's all in then we'll clean it up with the flap wheel and, and this job will be done. Okay, so that installed nicely. Um, tomorrow I'll get it off the mill, get it back in the weld shop, weld this up, and uh, then take the flap wheel, clean this all up, get the, the excess out of here, get it smoothed out nice, and then I'm going to take the tap and just hand tap, run it through and make sure I got it all the way through and all good. And then this will be ready to go back to the customer and get back to work. So it's the next day and I went and looked at the footage. Now I'm using a brand new camera, new everything, and I see I'm having some issues with the focus. The autofocus is, is, there's too much movement and it's throwing it off. So I'm gonna try to remember to do the manual focus. I also adjusted the audio levels because I was seeing some problems there. And, but the picture quality is just exceptional on my computer. I'm very happy with what's coming out so far. Um, so next thing we gotta do here is get this up off the mill, take it over to the weld shop, weld up our insert in there, bring it back in, run the tap through it, and uh, then grind off what excess is in here, and then this job is done, can go back to the customer and get back to work. We got it in here, next step is to weld it up. And um, I don't know if you can see this well, but this is a uh, filter that mask that fits under my welding helmet. Um, I just got this, I tried it out yesterday and, or the day before, and, and it was amazing the difference it made. Um, safety is key you know, when we're doing this stuff. Um, I, I can't tell you how much stuff this thing filters out. It's just incredible, um, the difference. I mean, I was doing some nasty stuff that I usually just open the doors, let the wind blow through, but I had this on and the doors open. I got done, took it off, and it was like the smells in here, was, it was overpowering. Um, so, and the filters are just filthy already. So it's a crazy how much stuff is in the air. We don't realize how bad some of this stuff is. So, you know, safety first. So I'm gonna start using this more often when I'm welding. And uh, so next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna put a bolt in here part way and then weld this all the way around. We'll take that bolt back out, grind that smooth, flip it over, grind the inside smooth, and then uh, run the tap through it one last time just to make sure it's all good and away it'll go.
Now we'll finish up by running the tap through it, just to make sure we got it all the way through and everything is good. seems to be a little bugger right there so we'll just take and get that out of there yeah I must not have gotten quite deep enough that's okay I don't have to thread the whole thing by hand just a little bit at the end here. And there it goes. So we should be in good shape now. And I can take this tap out and uh, go ahead and finish cleaning this thing up and it can go back to the customer. Perfect, just like new. Well, that job is all done and headed out the door and here is the next job. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a video on this. I've got so much going on and gotta turn these around real quick. But this job is a bunch of hydraulic cylinder rods out of a uh, big excavator. And the customer can't get the pistons off and they don't wanna to try to get the pistons off because they've been doing this 40 years and they know that if you try, you're gonna screw up the threads and we'll have to make a new rod anyway. So what we're gonna do is cut the heads off repack the glands and then weld the, put it all back together and weld the heads back on and so that's my next job i'm gonna get started on that here shortly well i hope you guys all like that repair um, and the new camera hopefully the footage was good let me know in the comments below what you thought um, or any improvements i could make but it is a nikon d5300 that i'm using um, so it's a pretty good camera um, not brand new because I didn't want to buy a brand new one and put it in this environment, but a very good used one. Um, and I got a really good price on it, so I'm good with that. Uh, so let me know what you thought of the video quality and uh, stay tuned for the next stuff. It's, there's going to be some good stuff coming up. So until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.